So today is our third cat in a row in our cat tutorials. So if you haven't already, check out the playlist of all the other cats up in the cards up above. And first of all, this is going to be Mog from Megan Mog, who we'll hear about in a little bit. Uh, first of all, I'm making the wire frame for, for her just by using two black pipe cleaners, uh, one cut in half for the legs and one for the head body and tail and I'm just deciding the distance I want the head down folding the legs in half folding the ends over just slightly for his paws and then folding the legs in half wrapping the the neck over to hold the legs in place um, and doing exactly the same a little further down I'm just going to curve the body so I get an idea of the length I want him to be and you can just see in the top peeking in is starting to be the picture of Meg and Mog that I'm using as a reference. We're making Mog. This is a black and white striped cat but Mog would also make, if you just did it fully in black, she would make a fantastic looking Halloween cat. And this is a really effective, quick, simple project for a beginner. It just takes a little bit of fleece, a little bit of stabbing, but overall pretty easy. So now I've got the shape roughly what I want. The body's about the same length as the legs, but it's not urgently because we can always shorten the legs if we need to be. Now just wrapping some white fleece onto her. If I wanted it to be a black cat, then obviously I could just do this in black. And I'm putting more fleece on the bum and just a small amount round the front of her. Again, this is just going to be another pear shape. What is it with cartoon cats and pear shaped bodies? Making sure the fleece goes a little behind the back legs and wraps around the tail a little bit, but the tail's poking up in the air, felting around the body. <clears throat> So, Meg and Mog were children's books in the 1970s. They were written by Helen Nicol and illustrated by Jan Penoski. I hope I said that right. <clears throat> and this time of year always makes me think of Meg and Mog. It used to be when we went back to school, um, as the nights were drawing in, it was getting cold, before the days of suddenly everything's immediately Christmas. But we would have um, the run up to Halloween, Meg and Mog stories would come out. Just making her head here, which just is just making a ball of black. Um, it's not a whole lot of shape in here. It's just gonna be slightly wider lengthwise than it is up and down. <clears throat> So Meg is a witch whose spells are all going wrong and Mog is her cat and they also have an owl friend as well. She was actually made into an animated series in the 2000s and was a stage play with Maureen Lippmann as Mog. Fascinating. <clears throat> So I'm just shaping this head into a ball, as you can see, slightly wider and just felting it all on just onto the end of her neck. So she's got some some movement in her neck. And this is it's such a simple project, but with all the wire in her legs and through her body and in her tail, she she's got a fair lot of posability as well. So if you made her all in black or all in white with white pipe cleaner legs or even in different colours, Pink and white might be cute, red and white, all sorts of different colours. Um, I think there's millions of different variations of this cat you could make. It's so simple and would be super cute. And for all this, for this project, all you're going to need, two pipe cleaners, some black fleece, some white fleece, and a little bit of that gold horrible colour that I always talk about never liking and I seem to be using in all the cat projects. And of course, your felting needle. And this footage is just speeded up two times quicker, but it really is a fairly quick project. All I've done is cut out some of the extra bits of firming round, but as you can see, just felting all around to get her shape, this pear shape, and then the round head. Literally just felt over and make sure it's as firm or as soft as you want it to be, really. Um, and the size, whatever size you want her to be, she's probably about four inches in this version, not giant. If you go too big, then you could use a, a firmer wire and wrap it in black fleece. But I think the pipe cleaners give the perfect fuzzy leg thing. And then she just has two tiny little ears, really. I'm just working on two very small triangles for her ears and just going to felt them onto the side of her head. 
I remember as a kid from reading these and just always thinking out of Meg and Mog, Mog was seriously the, the brains of the bunch. Meg was well-meaning but all her spells always went wrong. But it's the perfect time of the year for witches and cats and all sorts of spooky creatures. So I plan to make one of her solidly in black as well. I think with a slightly thinner, longer body that would be the perfect Halloween-y cat as well. So pinching the ears between my fingers as you can see, just holding it in place and felting into the ear, through the ear and into the body, just firming them up and smoothing down the shape. Um, the white I'm using is the carded white Coradale that I always tend to use and the black is a carded black Coradale which for some reason black is never as nice to felt with as the white which is why I tend to use white core whenever I can but we've got to do black for the face so it compresses a whole lot more than white does for some reason so I need a larger amount so always get get the feel for your for your wool how it felt but you can always add more if needed I'm just trying to make the ears be slightly further back in the head as you can see there's a lot more head sticking out the front and now we've got the stripes I'm just going with a reference photo of Megan Mogg but it doesn't really matter because her stripes seem to change whatever pose she's in because she's a cartoon um, but just felting round her bum and then stripes around her body I think she had about four or five stripes nice and simple you just take a bit of fleece felt it round and then just be nice and careful to keep the the black in the areas that the black should be so you've got a fairly firm line and take as long as you want at this stage to make sure that they're nice and firmly felted and then I was having too much fun posing her but just getting the tail down to the length that I want giving a little hook in the end because that's the pose I was going for folding over the ends just to make sure there's no stabby bits and then just checking the proportions if I'm happy with the proportions of the cat and then here onto this horrible gold wool that I absolutely hate for her eyes I'm rolling it into a loose ball and then felting it on onto her face in an arc shape so basically a semicircle there's the word um, so felt in the top curve and then just making the bottom nice and flat now you could as you're gonna see we're adding black bits in a minute you could just make this an, an arc sort of a rainbow shape or the McDonald's M shape just a curve and leaving the black as a negative space and that would work the same it would still look like the pupils but I just found this easier to make to make the arc of the eyes in this lovely horrible gold color and then we're going to add some balls of black just smaller balls of black and yeah that'll look like her eye eyeballs but it it gives it she's got a nice kind of squinty look with the bottom of the the eye being flat so there we go just rolling a couple of bowl, balls of fleece between my finger and popping them into the center of this eye I estimate this project could take you it's really only about half an hour half an hour's work depending on how firmly you felt them and what level you're at but it's a perfect beginners project it's great for any stages it's really satisfying how quickly this all comes together and how just ad adorably cute it is and I love the posability by using the wire frame with very little wool on it really the necks you know the head's free to move because the neck has no no wool on it the legs move great the tail is so expressive I always thought her tail was fantastically expressive Spend as long as you need going around all over this and firming it up, making sure the eyes are nice and clean. You know, the yellow's not going into the black and the black's not going into the yellow. It's nice clean lines. Squishing the head as you need to between your fingers to get the shape of the head the best you want it. The back of the head can be slightly flatter if you want and the front of the face poking out a little bit. Add more fleece if you need to, if you're not happy with the shape but it's it's fairly simple shape we're thinking of a pear shape and a ball and two little triangles and then eyeballs and I'm just going to add some glints of white into his eyes just just like I always do to bring them a little bit to life 
So this is tiny, tiny balls of white and that's always up in the top right hand side as I'm looking looking at something. So into the into the pupil but up up into well to the left looking at it but the cat's top top right hand side. And you're just about done. I had far too much fun posing this little guy. And don't forget, if you make any any Mog sculptures, then let me see. Share it on Pam's, Pam Duthie's Felting Friends or Ben McFuzzy Lugs. I'd love to see what you make. I think this is a super cute project and he's worked out so well. And he is great fun to pose. And thank you so much for joining me. I've got an exciting projects for next Wednesday, so I'll see you then.